Hi guys, nice to see you. Here we are up in the mountains. There's thunderstorms passing through with torrential downpours on and off. There's a little bit of a lull right now, taking advantage of it to record. So here we are. No tent, no shelter, not going to build a shelter. No ferro rod, no lighter. Just got a piece of steel. It's time to go camping. So, you come along with me. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm looking for my place to camp, and I'm going to get wet. I mean, I can wear water-resistant shell. I got a Gore-Tex jacket, NATO, I think, They're probably the 80s era. Still, pretty water-resistant, but uh, you know, it's just going to get wet with all this wet brush walking off the trail. So I can wear quick drying clothing but even so it's nice to have a fire right once I find my spot so uh, keeping an eye out things uh, to make a fire with so here's a cave and Porcupine lives in here, so I have to be careful. Could be quills on the floor of the cave that can still stab me, and uh, they're like fat needles, kind of. So it's not that much of a stab, I would say. But they got uh, thorns or barbs that I believe point backwards, so they don't want to come out. In fact, as you move, they tend to work themselves in more and more. Um, so watch out for porcupine quills and of course droppings aren't that great for promoting health um, but really that's the uh, least of my worries here because see how this is a tumble down cave so all these rocks tumbled down and that's an ongoing process so uh, and that's an ongoing process so at some point it's going to tumble more and if I'm in there I'm squashed like a bug so my advice to you is don't go in caves unless it's some sort of tourist attraction with uh, the catwalks and uh, fences uh, and guides for your safety or, or if you have uh, someone who knows caves with you and in that case that person would be responsible for your safety because uh, there's really no safe way to do it. Uh, for me, it's risk assessment. I can look at the cave and get a sense of uh, how impending the next collapse is. I'm in New Hampshire, Maine, this area. We have like these granite type caves. Um, but anyway, the caves we have around here, I can do a risk assessment. Uh, it's never going to be completely safe. So anyway, before you go into a cave, know what you're doing, or bring someone with you who does. So I'm looking in here though, and it is pretty dry in a lot of those areas. So even though we've had absolutely torrential rains for a few days now, there's uh, some pretty dry tinder in here. See how fine that, uh, that pine branch is. Leaves. Very dry. So I'm not camping out in this cave. I could. It was in the winter. You know, this cave or parts of this cave uh, We tend to stay around 50 degrees, more or less the temperature of the ground, you know, the subterranean ground under the frost level. Um, but for now, it's kind of damp, and the air isn't as good as I'd like. I'm going to go for more of an overhang, because uh, we're in summertime now, and even the torrential rains come back, I think I can find a, an overhang not a complete cave. So I'm just in here gathering resources. 
so this is the overhang that I planned and there's I think that's the air dropping a very fresh very liquidy small one but is it small enough it would still be around the mom for all I know they're deeper in the cave there's an actual cave there hmm. that might not be good so I'll scoot around and scout around <laughs> and see if I'm alone or I have company don't want to bother the animals you know but he might have done that and ran off so see what the situation is I might be here I might be in another area scouting around I'm calling this an overhang but further in further in it's a place big enough for a bear to hide oh yeah he's been digging in there too huh Well, let, let me keep going that's really liquidy I'm thinking he just did that as it heard me coming I'll give him some space okay guys put together a little stone fireplace under a rock overhang got some kindling Got some tinder to catch a spark. It's in this little tin I got from the dollar store. Been carrying that in the cargo pocket of my pants in the tin. So might not even be completely dry now, but dry enough. Then also in my tin, got some charred cloth. And I would say this is the easy way to do it. That's my opinion. Some people have said that uh, using charred cloth is cheating. And some have wondered if it was even used in colonial times. But there are historical records. For example, I've read records that referred to it as burned linen. And what they usually tried to do was keep the fire in the fireplace in the cabin, keep the fire going, at least have some coals that remained. And you can pile ashes on top of coals to preserve them. But if the fire went completely out, they might possibly... Uh, hike to a neighbor's, try to get some fire, bring it back, a tin or a pot or something, or a torch, light a candle, whatever they do. Um, but failing that, the neighbors are too far away or the neighbor's fire went out, or if it was uh, <coughs> a blizzard or something, they didn't want to be venturing out, then they had tinder in a tinder box what they usually used was uh, charred vegetable matter but if they're having trouble then the cheater method is uh, burned linen or today we call it char cloth charred cloth or char cloth so I think it's easier because you can hold the cloth next to your piece of flint or find a way that's comfortable next to a sharp edge. This is just a piece of quartz I picked up off the ground. Found it as is. Didn't nap it. Didn't sharpen it at all. And let's see what we can do.
There's my little ember that I caught on the charcoal. I put it to my little bird's nest. That's an exceptionally small bird's nest. Most people that teach, teach you to have a bird's nest the size that uh, looks like a robin would be uh, landing in it. That's too small even for a hummingbird, but just fits my tin like that and I just want to show you how I can do it. Even on a rainy day, I do have an overhang. That's how we do it, guys. Toasted bagel with cheese and a hot coffee. Sounds good right about now. So we have the delicious smell of melty cheese. But if we're ever going to have a problem with the bears, it's going to be now. This overhang works well except for filming. It's hard to set up the camera and replace it. You can see what I'm doing. So camping in wet weather is just flint and steel. It's very doable. You have to plan ahead. Of course, you have to plan ahead with matches. And that planning is not in the factory. They make the matches. And when your last match is gone, you have no more fire. Same thing with the lighter. All the preparation is done at the factory for you. So you can just make flame. Until the fluid runs out, the butane, then it doesn't work anymore. Or a ferro rod, thick ferro rod can last a long time, but every time you strike it, you take the material off, and uh, eventually it's gone. So, with this, a steel striker will last a lifetime of a person. Flint wears out. We don't have flint, we just have uh, quartz. And that doesn't last as long as flint even, or chert, so eventually need another rock, but they're lying all over the place. So I need something to catch the spark. The easy way is charred cloth. 
that's more popular in modern times because they're so rich compared to people like in colonial times. And now there's cloth everywhere. It's very cheap for us. It used to be very expensive, rare on the frontier. But if I'm running out of cloth, I can use punk wood. I can char that, or I can char uh, horse hoof fungus. But the easiest method is uh, cotton. I want some sort of fabric that's 100% cotton. I just have an old bandana here. I need a tin. Any sort of tin will work. The other tin I got at the Dollar Tree, and sometimes they have them, sometimes they don't. Uh, in the States, anyway, uh, I found Altoid tins all over the place. And that was uh, less than two dollars, it's a dollar and change. So I'll demonstrate the Altoid tin. I could cut this more carefully, I think, but. Oh well. I'm just going to cut it into some little pieces. So it's nothing complicated. I just have little pieces of cloth in my tin. If I were at home, I'd take scissors and make neat little squares. But I'm not home or in the woods, so I got some raggedy squares. Put in the tin. And then I drilled a hole. You don't have to. I just... Uh, I think it lets moisture escape if the cloth or punk wood or whatever is a little wet. Helps gases escape. Also escapes out your hinges, but you know, I like having the hole. It helps me monitor what's going on. And I drilled it near the top, so when I close it, it covers the hole. Just because when I'm carrying it, it caught in a rainstorm. That's just less water getting in. So I don't need a huge fire. In fact, it's burned down at coals now. And that's what I like. And I just put the tin on the coals. Then we wait. It smells like melty cheese. What are you cooking? Well, that was toasted bagel and cheese. I missed that. Now we're cooking up some chocolate. I've got a little torch flame coming out of my tin. That happens sometimes. It's not going to hurt anything. Alrighty. Flame and smoke is over, so we're done. Use my tongs. Take the tin off my coals. Now is the time for patience. Because if I pull that off the fire and open it, then it's going to burst into flame. And instead of having char cloth, I'll have ash. And that's useless. I just ruined everything I could have used. See? So now it's time to let this cool down till it's cool to the touch. And we'll see how our batch came out. From the look of that beer's poop, he's been eating blueberries. So I want to find some blueberries. still on my quest for blueberries to bring back to my cave and have with dinner but this tin is absolutely positively cold now so let's see what we've got some char cloth got another hummingbird's nest Found this piece of smoky quartz on the way. This one I did nap. Make some sharp edges on there. So I'm getting lots of sparks. <laughs> Fourth of July. 
think I like smoky quartz a little bit better than milky quartz or clear quartz. A lot of times it's really a spark thrower. Looking pretty good. go. Wow. All kinds of sparks. <laughs> All kinds of embers. It's one like a lighter or matches. You can replenish what you need on the trail. But when he got there, the cupboard was bare. At least this cupboard. Blueberry bushes with no berries. Gotta keep looking. These berries are edible, but they're not ripe. That doesn't do me any good. It's still in the stage of a flower, actually, but the flower is closed. It's a wintergreen plant. When the berries form and ripen, they're red and taste like wintergreen. That Flavor of gum or lifesavers that you know or maybe love. <laughs> Tastes like that. And I'm not going to recommend it because uh, I don't know if it's good for you, but we always chew the leaves a little bit. Not that they're as minty as the berries, but they are a little bit minty. So that's like some traditional wisdom. I never knew of it hurting anyone that I knew, but uh, I don't know medically or scientifically. We used to chew the leaves for a little bit of flavor and spit them out. But again, not recommended. Okay, chewing on a little bit of wintergreen leaf. It's just a flavor I need. Uh, Need some food. These are blackberries. Still green. You have to turn red and then black. They'll get bigger and juicier. When they're black, like a purplish black, then uh, good to eat. A lot of them around here. Not right yet. If I can remember where it is, come back. Finally, I struck blue gold. Just walking in a big circle because I knew my friend the bear had been eating lots and lots of blueberries. You can do it, I can too. I'm going to munch down some now. Take some back to my shelter. Overhang shelter. Not very far away, I've been going in a circle. 
All right, guys. I have a lot of work ahead of me uh, harvesting these berries. It's not mo the most thrilling thing in the world watching me do. So I think I'm going to be signing off. And the day's really shaping up with such torrential downpours uh, this morning. I thought the whole day was uh, going to be a blowout, but uh, the sun's coming out and it's a wonderful day. And I don't know this evening if the rain and thunderstorms will come back or if it will be clear and I'll just be sleeping under the stars. But in either case, life is good and I wish you a wonderful day. Be back as soon as I can. Till then, God bless you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul.